Hello everyone and welcome to our Tech channel. Today we're going to talk about this important new breakthrough in fusion and the potential impact it may have. Even though the cost of solar and wind is falling, renewables may not be enough to meet our demand for clean energy in the future. However, nuclear power can play a key role in decarbonizing our energy sector. Indeed, there has been a major development in nuclear fusion. This discovery was made by Dr. Martin Greenwald, Deputy Director and Senior Scientist at MIT, and his team. But before we explore this recent breakthrough in nuclear fusion in more detail, it's worth taking a step back and making a small point. It's important to know that nuclear energy can be obtained via two processes, fusion and fission. Nuclear fission reactors are the ones that currently use around the world. In a fusion reactor, a neutron is projected onto a small unstable atom of uranium-235 to split into small fragments. These new particles strike under uranium-235 atoms, creating a chain effect. The decay of the uranium isotope releases energy in the form of heat, which is then used to vaporize water. The resulting steam can then be used to power a turbine to generate electricity. As the name implies, the fusion process is basically the option of fission. Instead of dividing, we simply put things together. A fusion reactor mimics what happens naturally from the heat of the sun. That is, hydrogen isotopes split and then fuse into helium nuclei at astronomical temperatures and pressures. In this case, the fusion reaction produces four times more energy than it is obtained by the fusion process. In the case of a nuclear reactor, they introduce hydrogen isotopes like deuterium and tritium for fusion. Deuterium is a stable element, and the radioactivity of tritanium does not last very long. Safer and more environmentally friendly, fusion fuel cells are more abundant and less expensive than fission fuel cells. This is because deuterium can be extracted from seawater, while tritium is obtained during a fusion reaction itself. This is the ideal source of energy in absolute terms, because the fuel is almost unlimited. If fused in a power plant, it would produce enough electricity for the average American for a year. The potential advantages of fusion over fission are not only greater energy production and higher energy density, but also better nuclear waste management. At present, if nuclear waste from fission is not handled properly, it can contaminate the planet for decades. Decades. On top of that, the fission chain reaction can degenerate out of control, causing a nuclear meltdown or explosion like what happened in Fukushima in 2011. This type of incident would not occur in Takamak, which is based on a magnetic confinement fusion. A Takamak is a donut-shaped chamber where you heat hydrogen isotopes at 150 million degrees. Their atoms are stripped to electrons and transformed into ions. This results in the superheated ionized gas that is plasma. Under these conditions, the changed particles collide when fused together. It happens with the sun. Another safety net for fusion is that it is possible to stop the reaction by cutting off the fuel supply in the nuclear fission. This would be an excellent alternative to fission, which requires a lot of water to operate, but it is estimated that a working fusion reactor would not be available for 30 years. Indeed, no one has yet produced a fully functional fusion reactor, but it takes an insane amount of energy to produce a heat plasma. In terms of performance, for now, the power button of the fusion reactor is always greater than the thermal power recovered, which is called a fusion energy gain factor, or Q value. To achieve this, the Q value must be greater than 1, the equilibrium point of the thermal power in the reactor, but the closest at the moment is only 0.7, and it is very important to note that the Q does not take into account the power and electricity needed to run the facility and how much electricity it can actually produce from this reaction. The Q is only for the incoming thermal power versus the outgoing thermal power. To get the full picture, you have to take into account all these additional costs and convert the heat into electricity, i.e. produce more electricity than you need to run the plant. In France, construction of the Tokamak only began in 2007. When completed, it will be the largest fusion facility in the world. It takes a long time to build, costs tens of billions of dollars, and is designed to be a test facility, not an operational reactor. What Dr. Greenwald has been working on is one of the greatest challenges of fusion reactors, the incredible magnetic field they must generate to contain the plasma of massive magnets. It's a donut shape creates an intense magnetic field. This invisible bubble traps the electricity charged, extremely hot slurry in the middle of the air near the center of the reactor. In 2021, MIT and startup Commonwealth Fusion Systems designed one of the most powerful magnets ever created on Earth. The experiment generated an incredible magnetic field using a high temperature superconductor. The use of a superconductor had been suggested by MIT in 2015 via a tape. This material remains superconductivity and high temperatures, which generates a stronger magnetic field. 
It is actually a kind of ceramic composed of rare earths, barium oxide and copper. It is a rather fragile material. It is necessary to deposit it in its form in thin films on the solid structure. Nevertheless, this discovery is very important in our case because it allows the realization of a fusion reactor. It was discovered by IBM scientists in Zurich in the 1980s. It took decades to develop new materials and techniques, which can be applicable for fusion. One of the advantages of using this material, in addition to making the magnet more powerful, is to make more efficient energy. It should also be noted that thanks to the specifications of this superconductor, it is possible to reduce the size of the housing by 2% which would allow for cost savings and faster completion. The next step that MIT and CFS took into their recent tests was to assemble a magnet of the necessary size. This proved the feasibility of the concept and that the theory is viable, thus allowing the project to move forward to the final step, building an operational director. MIT and CFS are now aiming to achieve the first demonstration of the fusion device with energy production by 2025. To develop this vendor prototype, the CFS startup raised over 1.8 billion. This will give them time to address the issue of managing high temperatures despite the higher thermal load. Keep in mind that in the case of fusion research, fusion reactor tests only last a few seconds at a time, which is not necessarily a good idea. So it's not inherently a problem with fusion reactors, but rather the way these test devices are built to reduce costs while proving key concepts. These experiments often have very, very short pulse lengths. On the other hand, because of the physics of this experiment that is required, but also the economic reasons, offering this alternative in nuclear power could reduce both operating costs and nuclear waste. Although there are still many hurdles to overcome, this recent breakthrough proves that obtaining unlimited power from fusion may be a realistic and achievable goal in the upcoming years. That's it, we've reached the end of our topic for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a little blue thumbs up. To make sure you don't miss our next topic, don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to turn on that notification bell to be notified when our new video is released. See you soon on ATAC.